976 Evil is a 1988 supernatural worm turned slasher film about a demonic telephone hotline that empowers and possesses a nerd who seeks revenge against his bullies and tormentors. The satanic outcast is eventually defeated by his own cousin, Spike, but the hotline is still out there and only a dial away. The film is most notable for being the directing debut of Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England. The film also stars cult actor Stephen Jeffries in the lead role of Hoax. The film was panned by critics and grossed $3 million at the box office but was a popular and profitable rental on VHS. Cinetel Films, who produced the original film, decided to produce a straight-to-video sequel. After Robert England passed on directing the sequel, legendary B-movie director Jim Wynorski was hired. The horoscope cards. Somehow they get into the hands of people who are in some kind of trouble who need help. And so they start calling this number and the line gives them things, like answers to their questions, solutions to their problems. And so they keep calling the number because all of a sudden they got some sort of power that they never knew they had. I've tried it and it works and somehow I got away, but this thing, it possesses you and it starts to take you over. And Spike, you're scaring control. me. Look, I know this sounds crazy, but I've seen things. I've had visions. Leonard Spike Johnson returns to battle the supernatural as the horoscope hotline leads him to a small Californian college town where the Slade River Killer is killing off college co-eds. It is revealed that the school's dean, Professor Grubeck, is committing the murders in ghost form using astral projection and the satanic powers of the 976 Evil Hotline. Spike teams up with a college student named Robin, who the professor is obsessed with, and the two attempt to stop the supernatural slasher. So, um, what is it with this place anyway? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, the open till midnight and all this spooky stuff. Is this some kind of joke or what? We're a specialty shop that deals with delicate matters of the occult. What did you expect? 7-Eleven? So, uh, what's your specialty? Do you have a preference? Not at the moment, no. The original 976 Evil is a decent enough late 80s supernatural slasher that features a few memorable moments and is a film that was able to cash in on the phone hotline craze of the 80s. I've always found it to be a mediocre B-movie with a cool premise that doesn't quite rise above its budget limitations and lackluster terror. The original didn't really deserve or require a sequel, but I am glad that one exists. The film's sequel is also a B-movie, but it manages to be more entertaining and also features some gonzo memorable moments. It's a satisfying sequel that focuses on astral projection as well as the returning character Spike, which is a wise move, as Spike was the most likable character in the original film. Patrick O'Brien returns as Spike and turns in a capable and enjoyable performance. Anytime he's off-screen, the film tends to lose momentum. Spike is now a nomadic biker dude who goes from town to town investigating odd murders and supernatural events in hopes of stopping the horoscope hotline. This is a cool character development for Spike and ties it in nicely to the first film. Spike is a likable lead and has some badass moments in the film, especially the heroic and badass scene where he plays chicken with the professor while armed with lit dynamite. It's quite the action set piece that gets me pumped up every time and is one of the best scenes of the film in my opinion. The rest of the supporting cast is solid as well. Paul Kofus from Food of the Gods Part 2 plays the sheriff, and Brigitte Nelson is fun in her small role as an occultist and book collector. Supposedly, she lost a game of pool to director Wynorski, which led to her shooting for scale for one day on the film. The killer in the movie is quite memorable as his astral projection form rots away throughout the film. He also possesses some pretty nifty and powerful abilities, making for a solid slasher baddie. He also comes from the Freddy Krueger mold where he likes to throw out quips and one-liners. The character of Robin is likable enough, and she does have some good chemistry with Spike. The two of them have a cheesy romantic relationship, which helps lend the film some heart. Mr. Krubeck? Hello, Robin. Some drivers just shouldn't be on the road. There's some goofy charm to the proceedings and some silly horror moments, like when the Dean's house begins attacking Spike as he's investigating for clues. The astral projection effects are passable if not a little cheesy and dated. The idea of an astral projected killer is kinda neat and they do manage to do some creative kills with the gimmicks. 
There's a pretty impressive car chase scene that ends in a rather cool explosion, which is all rather effective considering the film's low budget. I also really like the scene where the Dean murders a chick by astral projecting her into a TV that is showing It's a Wonderful Life, and then Zoot Zoot from the movie kills her. The gore isn't over the top, but there are some gooey bits. And for a Jim Wynorski movie, there is surprisingly very little TNA. The film's climax is a little anticlimactic, but it does have a sweet and endearing ending between Spike and Robin. The demise of the killer is a bit underwhelming, too. Now, 976 Evil 2 The Astral Factor is not a great horror film, but it is an interesting sequel and an underrated supernatural horror flick from the early 90s. I tend to go back and rewatch this movie more often than the original. A lot of other reviewers claim the movie is cheap, nonsensical, boring, or unnecessary. I don't share those sentiments. Overall, 976 Evil 2 is an entertaining Nightmare on Elm Street inspired sequel that I would recommend to B-movie fans. It's a guilty pleasure for me for sure. cute. You kind of remind me of a young Freddy Krueger. <laughs>